as pastor. Grace to you and peace in the name of God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, for this is the day the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. I bring you greetings this day on January the 28th, 2021, from the historic St. John African Methodist Episcopal Church, located on the corner of East 40th Street and Central Avenue here in Cleveland, Ohio, where I, the Reverend Henry F. Curtis IV, serve as pastor. We also greet you on behalf of our sister congregation, the Greater Avery African Methodist Episcopal Church, located at 7505 Wade Park Avenue in Cleveland, Ohio, where I too proudly serve as pastor. So on this Thursday late morning, we gather virtually in order to celebrate the fact that we can see the goodness of the Lord while in the land of the living. So we come today for just a few brief moments near this midday hour, just to simply say, I love you, Lord, and I lift my voice to worship you, O oh, my soul rejoice. Take joy, my King, in what you hear. Let it be a sweet, sweet song in your ear. Would you please join me in prayer? Gracious God, we thank you and we praise you this day. For this is the day that you have made and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. We thank you, Lord, for last night's rest and for this morning's rising. We thank you, Lord, that once again we can say goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. So God, as we pause at this point of our day to lift up our praises to you, we pray that you would hear our prayer, that you would incline your ear unto us. Somebody needs you, Lord, come by here. Somebody's calling on you, Lord, come by here. Somebody, Lord, is sending up timber to heaven. And we pray, O oh God, that you would receive our prayers, that you would hear our prayers, that you would incline thine ear unto us. And we will be always cautious and careful and mindful and dutiful to give you the glory, the honor, and the praise. And the people of God said, Amen. It is truly good to be with you during this time as we gather virtually to lift up the name of Jesus and to come together and to realize and to recognize and to acknowledge the goodness of God and the presence of God in our lives. The Holy Spirit placed it on my heart for us to be able to use this virtual technology that we have in order to come together and to have brief times of prayer and meditation in which we can once again connect with our faith, with our God, and connect with one another. So I thank you for tuning in with us this uh, late morning, and some of you may see this on, on tape delay and we'll watch it much later, but we are uh, here today on uh, Thursday, January the 28th in the year 2021 at approximately the 11 o'clock hour, a little after 11 o'clock here in Cleveland, Ohio at the St. John African Methodist Episcopal Church. So I pray that you've already had a blessed day and pray that this interlude uh, as part of your day uh, will further enhance the blessing that God has for you on this beautiful day. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. So I ask that you would pray with me this morning as we look at 1 Timothy chapter 6, verses 6 through 10, and I will be reading from the Revised Standard Version. Hear now the word of the Lord. There is great gain in godliness with 
contentment. For we brought nothing into the world, and we can take nothing out of the world. But if we have food and clothing, with these we shall be content. But those who desire to be rich fall into temptation, into a snare, into many senseless and hurtful desires that plunge men into ruin and destruction. For the love of money is the root of all evils. It is through this craving that some have wandered away from the faith and pierced their hearts with many pangs. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Lord, speak to me that I may speak in living echoes of thy tone. As thou hast sought, so let me seek thine erring children lost and low. Now may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. In Christ's holy name we pray, amen. I read for your hearing 1 Timothy chapter 6, verses 6 through 10, as the Apostle Paul writes to Timothy, his spiritual son. And I'd like to highlight the sixth verse where the Apostle says to Timothy, there is great gain in godliness with contentment. There is great gain in godliness with contentment. It seems as though the more we get, the more we want. We can remember a time when we walked. Then the Lord blessed us and we got a bike. And I can remember my first bike was a black bike and my parents got it from the department store and it did not have gears on it. It did not have the hand brakes, but you pedaled it forward and then you turned the pedals backward and that's how the bike would brake. It did not have, as I said, any gears. It, 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 it was not fancy. But then I moved on from that bike to a 10-speed bike to now having a mountain bike with fancy shocks in the front of it that are as good as what you would find on some cars. And not only do I have one bike, but we have multiple bikes, bikes for speed, bikes for mountain riding, bikes for long distances on the roads. You, you see the point that I'm making. There was a time when we were walking and then we get one bike and two bikes and three bikes. I know people that, that have multiple cars. You can only drive one at a time, but they have multiple cars. Nothing wrong with that. We remember times when we lived in apartments and now we have a house. And then when we get more money, we'll buy a second house somewhere else, hopefully in a warm climate so that we can avoid the type of cold that we have here today in Cleveland, Ohio. But I Say that to say that when the Lord blesses us with one thing, sometimes we aren't content until we seek to find a blessing somewhere else. Now, don't get me wrong. There's nothing wrong with having nice things and acquiring nice things, especially if you've done so by honest and ethical means. But when you're attention is only on the material and you take your eyes off of God who is spiritual, God who is spirit, and those of us who worship him must do so in spirit and in truth, then we lose our focus on the one who meets our needs and is the source of our supply. See, God has blessed us with so much when we stop and think about how much God has blessed us with, we could not adequately inventory it all. But it seems as though we're always looking for more. I have to admit to you that during this time of 
COVID-19 and the pandemic, especially when families were forced to shelter in place, the thought crossed my mind that while I'm thankful for the house I have, I wouldn't mind having a bigger house, amen? But then when I thought about paying a bigger mortgage, I thank God for what I have. But we get a house, we want a bigger house. We get a car, we want a fancier car. And Paul, knowing this, speaks a word of encouragement and insight to Timothy, his spiritual son. And he encouraged Timothy to remind the people in Timothy's congregation, the people to whom Timothy ministered, the people who heard Timothy preach, he admonished his spiritual son to remind them that there is great gain in godliness with contentment. In other words, thank God and be content with what God has given you. Well, you may say, well, brother pastor, isn't that just a, a religion's way of telling us to be satisfied with what we have without aspiring to anything else? After all, we see the ungodly who are seemingly blessed with great riches and material wealth. Why is it that God's people have to remain content with little while it seems the devil's folks are relishing with much? That's not what Paul is saying. He's not saying to be content with meager resources due to injustice He's not saying be content with lack while others lust after more, more, more to your detriment. But what he's saying is, is that what has truly been given to you by God, whatever God has opened up and poured out as in the form of a blessing in your life, then be content with it with joy in your heart and with thanksgiving to God. Why is that, Paul? Why would you tell Timothy, your spiritual son, to preach that message to his congregation? I'm glad you asked that question because Paul answers it in the seventh verse. For we brought nothing into the world and we cannot take anything out of the world. Here in Cleveland, Ohio, we have a famous cemetery Lakeview Cemetery. And it is marketed in the area as Cleveland's Walking Outdoor Museum because it is filled with ornate monuments and even the grave and the, the, the tomb and, 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 the, and the memorial to President James A. Garfield, a former president of the United States uh, who died tragically uh, by assassination, he's buried there. And you can actually go into to the Garfield Monument and, and look and see the president's casket and his wife's casket in the urns of their children. And outside of the Garfield Memorial Monument, you can see the graves of, of uh, the founders of Sherwin-Williams and, and many other captains of industry, uh, John D. Rockefeller uh, Jr. and all of these luminaries of, of the late 19th and early 20th century are out there. But the interesting fact is, as a pastor, I've had the unfortunate duty of, 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 of escorting the remains of, of my members to the same cemetery. And I can tell you that the dirt is the same at Garfield's grave as it is at anybody else's grave that there are no Brinks trucks and, and, and safes and, and silver and gold at the graves of Rockefeller in the cemetery. What I'm telling you is that everybody winds up in the same place. That regardless of what you had here on earth, you're not going to take it with you. That Rockefeller and the president are no better off at Lakeview than anybody else who's out there. The only thing that matters is that before those folks went 
to their final resting place that they stopped by the cross of Calvary and had the blood of Jesus applied to their heart and cried out, what must I do to be saved? Lord, I accept you in my life. Wash me with your blood. Fill me with your spirit. Save me by the blood of Jesus. See, Paul says you didn't bring anything in the world and you're not going to take anything out of this world. But if we have food and clothing with these, we shall be content. We're not hungry. We're not homeless. Be content that God has poured out a blessing in your life. Give us this day our daily bread is what Jesus prayed in the model prayer. And if you're not hungry, you ought to say hallelujah. But those who desire to be rich fall into temptation into a snare, into many senseless and hurtful desires that plunge men into ruin and destruction. For the love of money is the root of all evils, and it is through this craving that some have wandered away from the faith and pierced their hearts with many pangs. See, Paul is telling Timothy, his spiritual son, to preach this sound doctrine to the people because the false god of humankind is money and wealth. We need money in order to make it in the economies in which we live. We need resources in order to live day by day, but those in and of themselves shall never be our God. And so my prayer for you today on this January the 28th, 2021. My prayer for you today is that God will continue to open up the windows of heaven and pour out an abundant, an abundant blessing in your life. A double portion, pressed down, shaken together, overflowing. The, the psalmist says, my cup runneth over. And if our cups really, really runneth over, we don't want the excess to spill to the floor, but somebody with a less full cup can put theirs under ours and be blessed because we ourselves are blessed. So thank God for what you have. Trust God that God will continue to pour blessings into your life that God will continue to open the windows of heaven for you. But don't forget that the material gains that we receive in and of themselves will perish because the grass withers and the flower fades away, but the word of our God shall stand forever. And my Bible tells me in John's gospel that that word is Jesus Christ, the one who is the author and the finisher of our faith, the one who tells us, in my Father's house, there are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, because one day you're going to have to leave the brick and mortar house where you dwell today and trust that on the other side, the mansion that Christ has prepared for you in glory will be open to you and that he will receive you unto himself so that where he is, there shall ye be also. So church, let us today be thankful for what God has given us. Let us today be grateful for the blessings God has given us. And let us today resolve in our heart of hearts to be a blessing to others as we have been blessed. The songwriter said it this way. He said, Jesus, you're the center of my joy. All that's good and perfect comes from you. You're the heart of my contentment. Hope for all I do. Jesus, you're the center of my joy. Let Jesus be the center of your joy. Don't let your bank account be the center. Don't let your car be the center. Don't let your house be the center, but let Jesus be the center of your joy. And when Jesus is the center of our joy, when Jesus is the source of our contentment, 
then we will have a joy that the world cannot give us and that the world cannot take away. Thanks be to God. Amen. I pray that that message was a blessing to you. And if it were, I ask that you would just pause right now and to pray this prayer with me. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, come into my life. Live your life in me. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Forgive me, Lord, when I pursued materials while forgetting about you. Forgive me, Lord, when I was not grateful to you for that which you have so graciously given me. But now, Lord, as I come to you today, I ask that you would create in me a clean heart and put a new and right spirit within me. Wash me with your blood and receive me into your holy family. Set my feet on the golden pathway of righteousness that leads to life everlasting. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. If you prayed that prayer with me, we thank and praise God for you and for your salvation. Please write to me at St. John African Methodist Episcopal Church, 2261 East 40th Street, Cleveland, Ohio, 44103. Pick up the phone and call, area code 216-431-2560, or email us at St. John AME Church, C-L-E-V, at gmail.com. As we conclude our time together today, I invite you to tune in with us on Facebook Live and YouTube Live on Sunday morning at 1045 a.m., where we will broadcast this week from the sanctuary of St. John African Methodist Episcopal Church. Thank you so much for being with us today. And now, receive this benediction. May the grace of God, the fellowship of the Spirit and the love of Jesus Christ dwell in you now, henceforth, and forevermore. Amen. Have a great rest of the day. God bless you, and we look forward to seeing you on Sunday at 1045 on St. John AME Church Cleveland's YouTube and Facebook channel. God bless you and have a great day. Goodbye.